I first got involved in rock climbing actually in college. My uh, college, North Carolina State University, offered rock climbing as a PE class. So it sounded really exciting, uh, maybe a way to kind of get outside and have a little adventure. Uh, when I first got started, I liked more the physical challenge, that's what it was about. And as I kind of advanced in the hobby and got more technical, I found that I really liked other aspects of it, like the equipment, um, the gear, the physics of the system that you have to use, and also uh, the partnership aspect of it. It's, it's really like a team, because when you get into some of the higher levels of climbing and different types of more technical climbing, you really rely on your climbing partner. Um, we train for spacewalks in a giant pool that's called the NBL, which stands for Neutral Buoyancy Lab. And it's a pool that's large enough to fit a full-scale mock-up of the International Space Station. So in that, we simulate everything like we would on a real AVA, including egressing out of the airlock, your safety tethers, and your local tethers that you would work when you're at a work site performing the job. So all of that is just very similar to the concepts of rock climbing. So during my astronaut interview, the most memorable question that I had from the interview committee came from Peggy Whitson, who, as you know, is a famous astronaut for having the longest time in space. She's done many, many spacewalks. She's a hero of mine. And um, she looked at me and she said, when you rock climb, have you ever been scared? And I felt like she was seeing right to my soul when she asked that question. And um, I feel like the answer to that question was absolutely, I have been scared. And that's when I really kind of found the fact that uh, turning that fear that you might be having into focus is so important. And I think that's what she was drawing on when she asked that question. So that was a pretty profound moment um, in, in my selection process. I'm Christina Cook, and I'm an astronaut. Launch command issued for ignition. Launch, launch command has been issued. Silicon second umbilical second tower umbilical separated. Separate. Booster ignition. Engine turbo pumps at flight speed. Engines at maximum thrust lift off. And lift off. We have lift off of lift Nick off. Hay, Christina Cook, and Alexei Ochinin now on their way to the International Space Station. Good first stage forward. performance so far. The Soyuz delivering 930,000 pounds of thrust from its four boosters in single engine. The first stage of the Soyuz measures 68 feet in length, 24 feet in diameter, burning liquid fuel for the first two minutes, six seconds of the flight. Everything is nominal on board. The crew is feeling great. Forty seconds. The vehicle is stable. Copy all. This is Burlock One. Everything is nominal on board. The crew is feeling very well. Control system parameters are nominal. Copy all. Everything is nominal on board. The crew is feeling well. Good call that the escape tower has been jettisoned. Without a doubt, my most memorable day was day one. With the assistance of Space Station Commander Oleg Konyenko, Christina Cook of NASA, the first one through the hatch being greeted. That was the day that I have seared in my memory. Visions when I first arrived here, opening the hatch, seeing some of my best friends on the other side, floating through, seeing my first glimpses of the actual interior of the space station after having traveled here for six hours on a small Soyuz spacecraft, that it actually exists for the betterment of humanity, doing science and exploring, that it was real and that I got to live here. I'm very privileged to have that as one of my favorite memories. One time as a crew, all six of us were together. And one thing we enjoy doing is singing karaoke, believe it or not. And we were belting out one of our favorite karaoke songs, Winds of Change. 
And as you know, we have the internet here supplied by a KU band antenna, which has passes where sometimes it has to reset and we'll lose that internet. So we're belting out winds of change and all of a sudden the feed dies. And we go on and we're talking for a little while, maybe 10 minutes or so go by. And then suddenly the KU band antenna picks back up the satellite and winds of change, our karaoke video starts really loud in the speakers again and without missing a beat conversation instantly stops and we all just resume singing immediately and uh, that was a really really great moment I'd have to say any meal that we share together is a great one and of those some of my favorites I would say would be our pizza nights our folks on the ground send up care packages sometimes and they'll put together a little non-perishable pizza kit and we're able to actually make pizzas in our kind of makeshift space oven using tin foil and a little bit of creativity and seeing what everybody comes up with and sharing with each other and just something a little different, a little bit out of the norm that we actually feel like we get to prepare ourselves as opposed to just opening up uh, out of a packet. It's really special and it's a lot of fun. One really striking moment was the first time I saw my hometown in the area where I grew up, which is coastal North Carolina, and seeing those outer banks come into focus around the horizon and suddenly realizing what I was looking at was a just breathtaking moment. Some of the other favorite things I have to look at would be definitely the auroras, the northern lights and the southern lights. And those are really special to me because I spent so many years working in the Antarctic and the Arctic and seeing those auroras from below. And so to see them on a planetary scale from above is just truly mind-blowing. You know, just like those memories of day one, there are a couple flashes that I'll just never, ever forget. For example, my very first spacewalk with Nick was obviously incredibly memorable just because it was the first time I ever had experienced that. And there was one moment where, despite how focused I was, on doing everything right and having it be my first time out. And I looked across and I saw Nick working and behind him I saw the earth gliding by and it was clearer than I had ever seen it out of the, any window on station. I had only been on board for about two weeks and that, at that moment I just felt like everything I had ever worked for, everything I had ever loved, everything I had ever wanted to contribute to in my entire life was just culminating in that moment and recognizing that it was real there was my friend who I've been training with for six years right there with me. Uh, that was a moment I'll, I'll definitely never forget. Going out the door with Drew Morgan twice on both spacewalks was awesome. That particular spacewalk series that we did had some unknowns that couldn't be simulated in our spacewalk training facility. And so we were really discovering as we went how the series was going to unfold and if all the things that we had planned were really going to work. So that was really exciting too. And then the spacewalk with Jessica Meir was just an unbelievable honor. And there were times when we looked at each other, for example, right when we came out the hatch, we caught each other's eye and we knew that we really were honored with this opportunity to inspire so many. And just hearing our voices talk to Mission Control and knowing that two female voices had never been on the loop, solving those problems together outside was a really special feeling. In the beginning, the surprise was just that this place actually existed. But more recently, the surprise that I've uncovered is the human body and mind's ability to adapt to any situation. For example, I sometimes joke that before Jessica got here and before I you know, heard her all the time explain, exclaiming about how exciting and fun it was to float, I think I had actually forgotten that I was floating. The human mind just has an ability to really accommodate any situation and to turn it into normal. So, for example, the fact that we can just work right on the ceiling like this and not even know the difference between the two, it's really been an exciting and a huge surprise to see that life up here can actually become normal because of what our bodies can adapt to. I'd say the most memorable item I've ever received would be handwritten letters from my husband. Um, no matter what, things that people send up and take the time to make me or write me, physical things that I can hold um, mean the world. I've gotten two handwritten letters from my husband and they're always from months before. So for example, I got one in October that he wrote in July because of the due dates of our, of our items. So, 
the letters aren't necessarily relevant to the moment, but the fact that, you know, they can express things and that it's something that someone you love on Earth actually was holding in their hands is really special. So use MS-13 continuing to make its way down. Just a few more minutes. Uh, scheduled to touch down in two minutes, actually, 3.12 a.m. Hopefully we'll get a little bit of video back. There it is. Inside, Christina Cook, Luca Parmitano, and Alexander Swartsov. Copy all. Again, one of the last things to happen here will be the uh, firing of the soft landing engines. That'll happen just a couple of seconds before the actual touchdown when it's about 39 feet above the earth. That's six solid propellant engines that are intended to uh, soften the blow of landing just a little bit. Altitude. Soyuz also has seat shock absorbers that will be turned on by now prepared for that landing. And the seats themselves are contoured to fit the astronauts individually to provide them the softest possible landing. Although all reports are that it still is not quite soft. Land inside. You can see one of the helicopters that's uh, been sent in to meet the Soyuz there in that view as well. And it looks like Soyuz MS-13 carrying Christina Cook, Luca Parmitano, and uh, Alexander Skortsov has touched down 3.12 a.m. Central Time, right on time. And now after 328 days in space and 139 million miles for Christina Cook and 201 days in space, 85 million miles for Luca Parmitano and Alexander Skortsov, the Expedition 61 crew is officially home. Again, that uh, landing came right at 3.12 a.m. Central Time, 3.12 p.m. Kazakhstan Time, following uh, the deorbit burn that set, its on, set it on its way at 2.18 a.m. Central Time. Gortov uh, is out of the spacecraft. Uh, he will be uh, helping down the slide. That's part of this ladder apparatus at the uh, top hatch of the Soyuz. He's waving, smiling broadly, thumbs up. And uh, he is now back on terra firma. And we are seeing that live now, Rob. Thanks so much for keeping us informed while we waited. Uh, we got it just in time to see uh, his smiles and thumbs up. Very good. We'll, uh, we'll hang here with you, Brandy, uh, and provide any uh, additional details that we might be able to do. I'm going to try to reposition myself so I can uh, get a better view of Christina Cook when she comes out of uh, the Soyuz. Alexander Skortsov certainly looks like he's glad to be home, pumping his fist into the air, shaking hands, lots of well-wishers on, on hand. Once again, uh, on this mission, Alexander Skortsov racked up 201 days in space, but he's adding that to what he uh, what he uh, totaled on previous space uh, three uh, uh, two previous space flights. Now 
to come up with 546 days in total that he has spent in space over those three space flights. And, and Brandy, if I might interrupt, uh, Christina Cook, your record holder, she is out, thumbs up, and a huge smile. Yes, we are seeing it real time. She definitely looks glad to be home. Again, uh, 328 days that she's spent in space since her launch on March 14th. Cook now is uh, going down the slide, Brandy, and she'll be brought uh, to her chair. All Brandy smiles and looking like she's feeling great. Still hear me. Yes, we can still hear you, Rob. Okay, I'm going to make my way over to uh, Christina. Christina, welcome home. Current record ho holder for longest uh, single space flight by a woman of any nationality and seventh longest or seventh most space flight time accumulated by, uh, by an American astronaut. They, um, Randy, they just uh, scooted her chair just uh, a few feet back from where it was uh, to give uh, the uh, group of photographers and uh, television cameras here a little bit uh, more room to position themselves. Uh, She's now donned sunglasses, as undoubtedly you can see, and uh, we're awaiting uh, the extraction of Luca Palmitano, who has spent more days in space than any other European space agency astronauts. We're standing by for that. We're still at the moment seeing a view of Alexander Skortsov, still looking like he is feeling pretty good and happy to be home. Still giving thumbs up. Christina Cook, uh, by the way, Brandy, just look around at the uh, a large uh, group of uh, folks here to greet uh, her and her crewmates, and she uttered the word, wow. Very impressed and very happy to be breathing this nice cold air on uh, this Thursday afternoon. I and think a lot of people saying wow about her as well. Big thumbs up uh, for Luca Parmitano if you're seeing him being helped down the slide. He is no stranger to uh, Soyuz landings, of course. And Cook and uh, Sports Off are giving a big fist bump uh, to their teammate. Number one, fun. Looks like you've got three happy uh, astronauts there. Glad to be back to the ground. Yeah, I'm going to